Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to read or interpret a line plot involving whole numbers, and then also how to create a line plot involving whole numbers. We will start with interpreting a line plot and then move on to creating a line plot. Now remember, a line plot is a type of graph that displays data along a number line. We use X's above the number line to show the number of times something occurs. Basically, line plots help us organize and present data. Let's jump into our first example where we have a line plot and then we have four questions to see if we can read and understand the line plot. For our example, it says, Amanda likes to go on daily bike rides for exercise. She made a line plot to show how many miles she rode her bike each day. Now looking at the line plot, we have a title up top, which is right here, that tells us what the line plot is about, what it's showing us. We have Amanda's bike ride distances. Then we have a number line with X's above it. The number line in this example starts at zero and counts up to six by one. Underneath the number line, we have miles. That's our unit of measure. That tells us that the numbers on the number line represent miles. And then as far as the X's, each X represents one bike ride. For example, there are two X's above four. That means Amanda had two bike rides that were four miles. Let's jump into our questions now, starting with number one, where we have, what was the shortest distance? So what was Amanda's shortest bike ride? Well, we need to look for the smallest number in value on the number line with at least one X above it. Be careful here. Some line plots, like the one in this example, have a number line that starts before the X's start. Don't just automatically pick the smallest number on the number line. For example, we have zero on the number line right here, and that's the smallest number in value. But there aren't any X's above it, so Amanda didn't have any bike rides that were zero miles. Her shortest bike ride was one mile. There's one X above one. That means she had one bike ride that was one mile. And again, that was the shortest distance. So what was the shortest distance? One mile. Let's move on to number two, where we have which distance was the most common. In other words, which distance occurred the most number of times? Well, going back to one mile, so looking right here, we have one X, so that occurred once. Two miles occurred three times. Three miles occurred four times. Four miles occurred two times. And five miles occurred two times. And then lastly, zero and six don't have any X's above them, so both of those did not occur at all. Those are basically gaps on each end of the number line. Sometimes you'll see those gaps, sometimes you won't. Depends on how the number line is set up. So which distance was the most common? Well, three miles. Amanda had four bike rides that were three miles. And that was the most. Moving on to number three, we have how many bike rides did Amanda include on her line plot? So for this, we need to see how many total X's are included on the line plot. Each X is a bike ride, so we need to count all of the bike rides. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So Amanda included twelve bike rides on her line plot. Lastly, number four, we have what's the difference between the longest distance and shortest distance? When we find the difference, we subtract. So here we need to take the longest distance and subtract the shortest distance. The longest distance is five miles. The shortest distance is 
one mile. So we need to do five miles minus one mile. Five minus one gives us four. So the difference between the longest distance and shortest distance is four miles. So there's how to read and understand a line plot. Let's move on to creating a line plot. Now let's take a look at creating a line plot. Let's jump into our example where we have Maya likes to find earthworms. Today, she measured the lengths of the earthworms she found to the nearest inch and recorded all of their lengths. Create a line plot to display the lengths. So here are the lengths of the earthworms to the nearest inch. Now when creating a line plot, the first thing that we may need to do is organize our data, the numbers we are working with. You may be working with data that is already organized, maybe in a table, in order from least to greatest, or whatever the case may be. If your data is already organized, then you can skip this step. It's already done. For this example though, the data isn't organized. We just have a list of numbers in no particular order. So our first step here, we need to organize the data. Let's put it in order from least to greatest. That's going to make the data, the numbers, much easier to work with. We need to start with the least, which is going to be three, three inches. So we have one, two, three earthworms that were three inches. So one, two, three. Now we move on to four. It looks like we have one earthworm that was four inches. So one, four here. Now we move on to five. We have one, two, three, four. So four earthworms were five inches. One, two, three, four. Let's move on to six. It looks like we have one, two earthworms that were six inches. One, two. Then we move on to seven. And it doesn't look like we have any sevens here. So none of the earthworms were seven inches. Let's move on to eight. It looks like we have one eight. So one earthworm was eight inches. And that's going to be all of our data. So we have it in order from least to greatest. Let's double check everything though. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Let's see if we match here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have 11 numbers in our original list and 11 numbers in our organized list. So we are good to go and move on. We just want to make sure we didn't skip anything or count anything twice. So it's always a good idea just to double check. So we are done with step one. We organized the data. Let's move on to step two. So our next step, we need to find the least and greatest number we are working with. That way we can make a number line that fits what we have. We want all of our numbers to be included. And since we're in order from least to greatest, this is a pretty quick step but it's important because it will determine how we write out our number line. The least is three, the greatest is eight. So we are done with step two. We have the least and the greatest. Now we need to make our number line. We need to go from three to eight. Again, we have to make sure we include all of our data. Since we know that three and eight are the least and greatest, this number line will include those and then everything in between. Let's start with a line here. And we're going from three to eight. So we have six numbers, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And although we don't have any earthworms that were seven inches, we do need to include it on our number line since we are starting at three and counting up to eight by one. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And remember, those numbers represent inches, and we're going to label that 
at the end. So there's our number line, and we can move on to the next step. Now we need to draw the X's. The X's show the number of times each length occurred. So we're going to work our way from least to greatest here. Let's start with three. So how many earthworms were three inches long? Well, three. So we need three X's above three. One, two, three. And as we go along here, we're going to try our best to be as neat as possible. The X's should all be the same size and lined up. Next, we have four inches. There was one earthworm that was four inches. So we need one X above four. Next, let's move on to five. And it looks like we have four fives here. So four earthworms were five inches long. So we need four X's above five. One, two, three, four. Moving on to six, we have two sixes, so two earthworms were six inches long, so we need two X's above six. Moving on to seven, we don't have any sevens, so there weren't any earthworms that were seven inches long. Let's move on to eight. We have one eight, so one earthworm was eight inches long. We need one X above eight. And one thing we can do here after we have our X's is to double check we have the correct amount. We have 11 earthworm lengths, so we should have 11 X's. And we do, so we are good to go. So we are done drawing our X's and we can move on to the next step. Lastly, we need to label and write a title. We know what this line plot is showing us, but for someone else looking at this, the title and label are very important. They help a viewer understand the line plot and the data that is being presented. So let's start with the label. We need to label the numbers on the number line. What do those represent? What do they mean? Well, those numbers represent inches. So we need to write inches underneath here. And then next, we need a title above the line plot that explains what the line plot is about. And there's no one exact correct answer here, but we want something that tells the viewer what the line plot is showing. So let's do lengths of earthworms. So lengths of earthworms. And that's our label and title. So we are done. That's our line plot. Now notice, all of the X's are basically the same size, the stacks of X's are straight, and the X's are lined up. Meaning, all of the first X's start at the same point and are lined up with each other as we look across. The second X's are lined up with each other as well, so on and so forth. So again, try your best to be as neat as possible. So there you have it. There's how to read and understand a line plot, and then also how to create a line plot. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.